Hey, everybody. I hope you had a great time celebrating the resurrected Jesus yesterday, Easter Sunday. If for any reason you weren't able to worship with us yesterday, go to our church website, fbcrockhill.org, open up the live stream and watch one of the services from yesterday. That's at least something you can do to celebrate Easter. In our Bible reading plan, we are in chapter 6, so that's where our devotion is today, chapter 6 of John's Gospel. And, uh, you know, these chapters are long. There's so much in them. It's hard sometimes for me to uh, choose what I want to talk about because there's just so much truth and so much that speaks to me when I read these chapters. Um, but anyway, today, the verse that really spoke to me was verse 6. Now, the setting is there's this large crowd following Jesus. He's on a hillside, a mountain, and he asked one of his disciples in verse 5, Jesus lifting up his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, one of the disciples, where are we to buy bread so that these may eat? They're, they're coming here. We need to feed them. Where are we going to get the bread? And of course, you know, Philip answered in verse 7, we only have this much money. It's not enough to buy bread that will even give all of these people just a little bit. And then, of course, Andrew in verses 8 and following said, there's this little boy here. And uh, he has five barley loaves, you know, bread, and he has uh, two little bitty fish. And that's, that's a famous story. Of course, you know, Jesus multiplies them, feeds them, and they have 12 baskets of leftovers for the 12 disciples uh, following that, uh, that miracle. But the verse that spoke to me is verse 6, where after Jesus said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread to feed all these people? Verse 6 is kind of like parenthetically, John tells us that this he was saying, that Jesus was saying this to Philip, where are we going to get enough bread to feed all these people? He was saying this to test him, to test Philip. For he himself knew what he was intending to do. So even when Jesus was asking Philip this and Philip said, well, we've got this much money, but it's not enough. And Andrew said, well, here's this little boy, you know, with five little barley loaves of bread and two little bit, little, little fish. The whole time, Jesus had a plan. The whole time, Jesus knew what he was going to do. What he was doing, other than the miracle, he was testing his disciples. How did they think? What was their attitude, their faith? What did they see? Uh, what did they believe? How did they react? He was, he was, and, and it got me thinking how God, God uses situations in my life and in your life to test or prove me, okay? Testing is not always about failing or passing. Testing is about determining where we are. Testing is often about proving what we, what we are and what we are not. And that's part of what Jesus was doing here. And um, God puts all of us in situations to demonstrate to us, to test, to prove to us what our level of faith is or is not, what our willingness to obey is or is not when, when we're in difficult situations, when we're under pressure, when there's great temptation, uh, whatever. Uh, because that's part of our development, part of our growth. That's what he was doing with the disciples. And after he performed this miracle of dividing the fish and bread and feeding everybody, they began to see things a little bit different. And what encourages, encourages me is to know that as I'm going through situations and circumstances and opportunities and all of that in life, it's not haphazard. Every time God is proving, testing me, showing me, he already has a plan. Here he already knew what he was intending to, to do. Whatever circumstance or situation I find myself in where God is testing me, proving me, so I can grow and learn, God has a plan. Always. He always knows what he is going to do. And, 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 and part of what he's doing in that is showing me how much do I really trust him? How, how determined am I to obey him even when I don't see all the ways forward? Um, 
But if I will trust him and will obey him in those moments, he will show me his power. And what that does is it increases my faith. So when I read that verse, he was saying, he was saying all of this to test him, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. Um, I think it's a good thing that God puts me and you to the test that God seeks to prove to me and prove to you where we actually are because we may think we're somewhere and God says, I need to show you you're not where you think you are. I need to show you so that I can actually take you where you think you are. And that's a good thing. God's always working to help us. He always has a plan. You may feel sometimes like you are floundering around God never is. He always knows what he is intending to do. So trust him and obey him even when you don't see a way to feed the 5,000. Trust him and obey him always. That's the message for today. I'll see you tomorrow as we look at John chapter 7.